welcome you to more Monday. I'm really excited about tonight because we're going to become aware of who the enemy is. And when we're aware of who the enemy is, we are going to win the battles that come against us every single day. I don't know about you, but I want to live the abundant life that Jesus Christ has died to give me. He says in John 10, 10, that he has come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. Does that mean everything's perfect when we are followers of Jesus Christ? No, there are tough times. And, and the Bible says that in this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but you can count it all joy. I think this is John 16, 33. Why? Because he's already overcome the world and his system. We are victors amidst all the things that we go through. The Bible says in Romans 8, 37, that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. But I don't know about you, sometimes I don't, I don't always walk in that victory. And for the first probably 20, 25 years of my Christian walk, I was not living a victorious life. That's why I write a magazine called Victorious Living. There's a sticky note on that. <laughs> Victorious Living. Because I went through life for so many years believing in Jesus, but not living a victorious life. And I've made it my mission in life to help others experience victory in Christ Jesus. And that doesn't mean, like I said, you're going to have perfect situations. No, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. And every day we're going to come up against barriers and difficulties. But the Bible says in Isaiah 40, 43, 2, that he will be with us as we pass through those waters of difficulty. He's going to uphold us with his righteous hand. And he's going to give us the victory. And so we've been doing this awareness series of having victory by being aware of who we are in Jesus Christ. The first part of the series was being aware of who God is. Because if we truly understand his character, that he is good, he is loving, he's the good shepherd, he's the good father, he is our friend, he is love and generous and just and fair and forgiving, a God of another chance, if we understand that that is his character, then we will trust him. If we understand and become aware of who we are, that we are children of God, that we have rights and privileges with that, that his power lives in us, that we are loved and treasured, it will change how we face life. And the third thing I want us to become aware of is that I want us to be aware of the battle that we're in. Because if we aren't aware of the battle that we're in, then we will be defeated. We may have eternal life in Jesus Christ, but we will go through life not experiencing the plans and purposes that God has for us, according to Jeremiah 29, 11 and John 10, 10, that he's come to give us an abundant life. If we, if we don't know who we're fighting, if we don't know the source of the battle, we'll be fighting the wrong battle and we will not be walking in victory. We will not be experiencing the plans and purposes. We will not be fulfilling our call. And our call, when we fulfill it, it impacts the world. And we have peace and we have joy. And there's so many Christians, and I was one of them. And I'm gonna share a lot of my story tonight, but I was, I was a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ, who walked in condemnation, who walked in fear, fear of failure, fear of people, fear of disappointing people, fear of not being perfect, fear of where God was gonna take me, fear, fear, fear. Well, guess what? God does not give us a spirit of fear, according to Timothy in the Word of God. 2 Timothy 1, 7, he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, a strong, sound mind, and a spirit of love. So when I was walking in frustration, when I was walking in confusion, when I was walking in fear, when I was walking in hurt and anger and resentment and unforgiveness even toward myself, I was not walking in the spirit of God. I was falling prey to the spirit of the enemy because who gives us a spirit of fear? Who gives us a spirit of pride? Who gives us and wants us to walk in those things? It's the enemy. And so when the enemy knows that he's lost you for eternity, see, that's the first thing. He wants to keep you bound up. He wants you to keep you from understanding that Jesus loves you and that he has eternal life for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. 
Satan wants you to go to the flames. <laughs> you know, every night I have a, every Monday night I have a, a picture behind me. Well, tonight we got the fire and I didn't intend that, but you know, Satan wants you in the flames. He wants you to go to hell. He wants company. Misery loves company. Okay, he wants you to burn there, be separated from God for all eternity. And it's a real place and there's a real enemy. But when you come to Jesus and you say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. You are snatched from hell. When your faith is in Jesus, you have been snatched from the fire and you have been sealed for eternity. The Bible says, for God so loved you that he gave his son for you, that if you would believe in Jesus Christ, that you shall be saved and you shall have eternal life. But if Satan has lost you for all of eternity, he doesn't leave you alone. What he then looks for is an open door in your life through your thinking, through maybe unforgiveness, through actions. And we're going we're gonna to study that a little bit, how we open, the, open up a door for the enemy to come in. But he wants to then attack us to keep us afraid, afraid to trust God, afraid to, tra to, to travel outside of our comfort zone, afraid to step out in faith. He wants us to try to hang on the controls of our life. He wants, he'll stop at nothing to keep you from fulfilling the plans and purposes that God has for you that are good. And so I want you to not be ignorant like I was of the enemy's schemes and his devices. You know, it says in Ephesians 6, let's turn there. We're, Ephesians 6 is a very, very powerful chapter. And we're going to spend some time on that because the Bible tells us how to defeat the enemy, how to walk in faith, how to put the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness, wear our shoes of peace and take up our shield of faith. And, and so if I didn't already say that. So we're going to talk about those because I want to go deep into each one of those. But I want you to listen to this. It says in Ephesians 6.10, Be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. He has strategies. And we're going to talk about some of those tonight. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. I grew up in a denomination that was wonderful and it taught salvation. But what I did not learn was that there was a real enemy after out to get me and that my war was not against my emotions, my, my war was, excuse me, my war was not against people. My war was not against like flesh and blood, the Bible says. It's against an unseen enemy. And I didn't, I knew he was there, but I thought he was kind of in hell, hoping that I would come there. And so I didn't think much of him. I'm like, well, I'm saved, so I don't have to worry about the devil. What I didn't realize is he was wrecking havoc in my life for decades. How am I thinking? This mind of ours is the battlefield of the enemy. And he seeks to deceive us. He seeks, this is character. He's a deceiver. He's a manipulator. He's the father of lies. And I'm going to give you this scripture in a minute. He is one, he's a murderer. He's a thief. He takes your attention away from God and he tries to put it on circumstances. He tries to feed you lies and just hope that you will buy into them. Like, you're no good, you're not enough. That was what I always heard. I, I knew I was saved, but I, I, I just always heard, you haven't done enough. You haven't performed well enough. You haven't pleased enough people. And so I spent a lot of my years performing, pleasing people, trying to be a perfectionist. And what happened is, is over the years, I was bound up and burdened in performing and people and perfectionism. When God over here was saying, Christy, I've come that you may have life, that, you, that where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. But I wasn't free. I walked through life guilty, feeling guilty for everything all the time, condemned in my mind. Wake up in the morning and there it was, condemnation. I didn't realize that the enemy was the source of condemnation, for there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, the Bible says in Romans. There is no condemnation in him. 
The Bible says that God convicts us to bring us about to a new direction that we would have life. The enemy condemns us so that we feel so discouraged that we just give up. I was a water skier for many years. You guys know that, most likely if you're watching this and you know much about my story. I was a professional water skier, world champion. I would have never been a world champion if I didn't get off the dock. I had to get off the dock, get in the water, say hit it to the boat driver, and go. I had to move past my fear. Well, see, the enemy wants us to believe in the power of the boat, God. He, if we're connected to God through our faith in Jesus Christ, like that rope, you picked up the rope. If he can't stop that, if you've already gone that far and you, you are sealed for eternity through the blood of Jesus, what he wants you to do now is to stay on the dock. He does not want you to say, hit it to God. And that's where I lived for many, many years. I was on the dock, afraid. Satan would say, you can't trust God. Don't go out there. Don't say, hit it to him. Don't surrender your life to him because he can't be trusted. That's his number one lie. He's holding back on you. Think about in the garden in Genesis 3. That's what the enemy said to Eve. He took the form of, Satan took the form of a snake the snake starts talking. Tell me I wouldn't have run out of that garden. But the snake starts talking. I always find that odd that she didn't just like go, ah, and run away. I don't know if animals talked or what, but Satan starts talking to her and says, did God really say? And he starts to talk to her in a way we twist the truth, makes her seem like God's holding out on her. And so that's kind of what he did to me. You don't want to trust God with your life wholeheartedly. You want to hang on to the control because God's going to take you somewhere you can't trust him to take you. God is going to ask you to give up things that you don't want to give up, not realizing that everything that I would give up for his cause, I would get back so much more. The things I was holding on to was actually keeping me from going in a direction where I would finally find peace and contentment and joy, all the things that world titles and championships could not bring. And so that was the lie Satan fed me, is that you can't trust God. What if you fail God? That's another lie he feeds you. You're, you're not good enough. You're, what if you, he, he doesn't love you. You know, you're too far gone. Those are lies that the enemy feeds you. And if you don't know truth, You'll buy into them and you will be so far from the plans and purposes that God has for you. And so it was after I got into the word of God that I really started realizing who I was, who God was, and who the enemy was. And here's who he is. And I wanna, I wanna bring some of these out to you. He's a deceiver. He's been a deceiver from the very beginning of time. Read Genesis 3 one through five, where, where he, excuse me, Genesis 3.15, where he is deceiving the enemy. I can't read my writing to tell if it's Genesis. So just read all of Genesis 3. I can't tell if that's one through five or 15. Um, 2 Corinthians 16, no, 2 Corinthians 11.3. I have terrible penmanship. And um, so he's a deceiver. And that is his goal is to deceive us. He tried to deceive Jesus. Think about it in the wilderness when he tempted Jesus. He, he tried to deceive him, to twist truth. He's always a twister of truth. I asked my daughter yesterday, I said, how would you describe Satan? She's like, he's a manipulator. He tries to manipulate situations for you to fall prey to his lives and his deception so that you'll take your eyes off God, you won't trust God, and you'll stay on the dock and not be going in the direction that God would have you go, those good plans that he has for you. John 10.10 10 says that he is a thief. That's who he is, he's a thief. He has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He is the complete opposite of God. God is your friend, he is your foe. God has good plans for you. He has plans of destruction. I mean, if you just kind of like put a column over here of who God is, who the enemy is, it, it makes it pretty easy to make a decision. Why would I ever wanna go this way? Why do I ever wanna go to the enemy side? You know, I think about all the years I skied. I was like a believer. I was like a water skier. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. <laughs> think about all the years that I had a faith in Jesus. I was like a water skier who was hanging on to two ropes. You know, I had my faith in Jesus, but also was grabbing hold of the lies of the enemy and 
people pleasing and the world. And I was hanging on to both and trying to go in the direction of both. And you just can't, it's impossible. And that's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to hang on to things thinking that you are going to miss out. And so John 10, 10 talks about that he wants to come in and steal, kill, and destroy your life. John 8, 44. This is a wonderful, wonderful verse. Um, I want to read it for you. It says, um, you are children of the father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. And this is where I was going when I was talking about hanging on. I was hanging on to God and onto the world. Well, if I really put a list up, you know, what does God have to offer me? For I know the plans that I have for you, Christy, good plans to prosper, not to harm you, to give you a hope in a future. And then here's the plans of the enemy over here. I've come to destroy your life, to steal from you, to lie to you, to manipulate, to control. Why would I ever hold on to this handle? It, it doesn't make any sense. I should run from this. I should drop this handle, turn and say, hit it, God. <laughs> hit it. I don't care what I have to give up. I want to follow you. And so we see right here that Jesus is calling these men, these scribes, the Pharisees, that you're a father of the devil. You are a child of your father, the devil. And so... That tells me that we could either be a child of the king or a child of the enemy, a child of the devil. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the devil's child, and I'm not. And I pray that you're not, because I became a child of God the moment that I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And so, some more things of who Satan is. He is a masquerader of light. He disguises himself as an angel of light. Second Corinthians, let's look that up real quick. It's really good. Second Corinthians 11, 14. Second Corinthians 11, 14. I should have worn my glasses tonight. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. It doesn't say he is an angel of light. It says he disguises himself. He sets out to trick us, to manipulate us, to confuse us, to make us think this is good. So one way that he did this in my life, when I went into full-time ministry, Satan made it seem like it was good for me to throw my entire life, my entire being into ministry. That came with a lot of sacrifices because I was married, I am still married, praise God, with children and Satan was showing me, oh, God wants you to put all your time and your energy into ministry. And what happened is all, a lot of my attention went over here when it should have been more balanced at home. It seemed like a good thing. It seemed like light. Let's go work for God. Let's go do this and that. But it wasn't. It seemed good, but it wasn't. It wasn't what God had for me. So he can make things look like this is the way to go. That's why you always have to be praying and asking God for his wisdom because Satan is masquerading as an angel of light, hoping that we will take our eyes off the true light and go in the wrong direction. Zechariah 3, 1 through 2 says he is the accuser of the brethren. It also says that in Revelation, I want to read this to you, 12, 10. Revelation, we don't get to Revelation very often. We should. There's a lot in there, a lot I don't understand. But it talks about the enemy. It says he is the accuser of our brothers and sisters, the one who accuses them before God day and night. Did you know that Satan is before God day and night making accusation against you? And that's why I love that story in Zechariah 3, 1 through 2, because that's, a, that's Satan's there. He's, um, I think it was a gentleman named Joshua. He's accusing um, it's not the Joshua, we know a different one. I think he's accusing him before God in God's light. He's my child. He is covered by the blood. You know, we have an advocate. We have an accuser, which is the enemy, but Jesus Christ is our advocate. And he's, while Satan's in front of God, just going like this, saying, do you know what so-and-so did? Do you know what so-and-so? Jesus is over there going, Father, they're ours. They are covered with the blood of Jesus. They are forgiven. They are righteous. 
So Jesus Christ is defending us from the accuser. He is our attacker. He's a devourer of us. He's going all over the world seeking whom he may devour. So let's look in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. Stay alert, and we're going to talk more about that. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. And remember that Christians everywhere are going through the same trials. The things you're going through, the temptation Satan's bringing is nothing new. And you stand firm. You resist him. We're going to talk more about that. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But um, he is an enemy that is prowling around, looking for a way into your life. And what does he want to do? He wants to devour you. And I did a study on that one time through Rick Renner, did a great study. And the word devour means he wants to, you want, he wants you so destroyed that when he's done with you, there's nothing left. Like, it's like you got splatted in the highway and then the birds came and ate you. There's nothing left but a little bit of juice. That's how disgusting that word is. That the vultures, everything, that's, he wants you gone. That roaring enemy wants to attack you and he wants nothing left. That's how fierce he will attack your life. But you're not defeated. You and I have victory. We already talked about that in Romans 8, 37. And so I look forward to sharing with you those tools to victory. Standing firm is, is one way to it. So he is the accuser of the brethren, brethren. He's an attacker. He devours. He's roaming the earth. It says in Job 1, 7. And you, you see that, that story in Job where he's right there before Satan goes before Jesus. I mean, before God. And he's like, I want to attack Job. <laughs> so um, that's an interesting. Well, God actually says, have you considered my servant Job? But again, we see that Satan's there just accusing him. He's a tempter in 1 Corinthians 7, 5. He's a tormentor. He convinces us um, to look in our own self for our own strength. He tries to convince us that we don't need God. He's a defeated foe. Romans 16, 20. I want you to just, no matter what you know about the enemy, I just want you to keep remembering that Satan is a defeated foe. Satan attacks you in your mind. He will bring you lies. He is the father of lies. There is no truth in him. And that's why it's so important that you know the word. So when you hear, I am such a failure, that all of a sudden, you know what? That's not what God says about me. He says that I am created in his image. Do you think God creates failure? No. If you hear, I'm nothing but junk, God doesn't make junk. So I had to go through that process for many, many years of renewing my mind with truth. You have to, I always tell my kids, it's, the enemy is going to pitch his lies. He's going to send them into your life. You got to catch them. You got to examine them. And you got to say, is this what I'm thinking? Is this of God? Is this emotion that I'm feeling? Is this of God? And if it's not, we need to apply truth. This is our medicine. <laughs> we need to try, try, apply truth and then discard that lie. We have a choice every day to believe the lie or to believe the truth. And which one we believe, whichever column we go in, are we going to follow after God or are we going to follow after the enemy, depends, determines whether we have victory in life or whether we stay defeated. And so I want to encourage you today, get in the Word, and I want to encourage you to become aware of what you're thinking about. We're aware now of the enemy and his tricks. He's a manipulator, controller. He wants you bound up. He wants you a slave to sin. Completely opposite characteristics of God. But now that we've realized how his, he operates, his mojo, we need to become aware of when we're falling prey. So I have to do this a lot. And, and it's just really been the last couple of years that I have realized, you know what? I'm feeling anxious. And I'll stop and I'll start going down the list. Why do I feel anxious? I'll, I'll just want to say, oh, I feel anxious. Why? Well, because 
let's take an example like last week. Well, because the bank account says we have $1,000 and we need 15000 by Friday to pay for the printing of Victorious Living Magazine. So, okay, let's go a little bit further. Why am I anxious over that? Because that money's not there and there's a fear there that we won't have the money. Well, that fear just revealed that I'm not trusting God. And so I got down to the lie. The lie is that God can't be trusted. So then I have to go back and say, you know what? God says that he will not fail me. God has called me to this ministry. God is the one that's told me to move forward and print this. My God shall supply all my needs according to my rich, to his riches, from his riches in Christ Jesus. I'm getting tongue tied tonight. But the thing is, I had to be aware and say, okay, why? I feel anxious. Why do I feel anxious? What is the lie, that the, the source of that anxiety? It's fear. What is the lie behind that, that fear that's feeding it? And so I want to encourage you. Maybe you, you just get all upset. Someone's in your, in your business and you're starting to get really angry. And it's like, what are you feeling? I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling hate. I'm, I'm offended. Okay, God doesn't give you a spirit of hate and anger and offense. He says not to be bitter, not to have a spirit of offense. That, that opens up a door to the enemy. We'll talk about that. And so you have to think about the emotions you're experiencing. What am I feeling right now when I look at that person? I feel uneasy. Oh, it's jealousy. And so you realize that, you know, Satan wants you jealous. God talks about how jealousy is going to lead you down just this, it's going to rot your bones. <laughs> According to Psalms and Proverbs, it's going to destroy you. Anger is going to destroy you. So you have to be aware of your emotions. Stop and just take notice about what you're thinking. My mind can go from praising Jesus that fast to look at that person. What are they wearing? And just judgment. I, I can be in church and it's happening. And I just say, Lord, I'm sorry. But at least now I realize it's there. And so it's going to take a while. It has taken me years. I was just laughing. I, I did an interview recently. And this lady kept saying, oh, man, you know, it's it, your mind has gotten so full of faith and this and that. I'm like, I was just laughing. She goes, the way you think. And I'm like, it has taken years, years to think in accordance with faith. Because the enemy was attacking and I was falling prey to the lies of fear. And when I finally became aware of the battle, for decades I have been catching the lies, examining them and applying the truth. Now, especially in the last couple of years, I have started to recognize how I feel. I'll recognize when I get defensive and I'll hear myself shooting back defense, especially with my husband or my father. And I'm like, why am I being defensive? And then I'll, I'll have to stop and then go back a couple of steps. Well, because I feel stupid. I feel like I don't have the answer. And sometimes it's pride. I did have the answer and I wanted them to know it. And so you got to get down to the source. And usually the source and the root of those anxieties, the fears are not of God. And you can start dismantle them, become aware of how you're feeling. And so that you become aware of whether or not it's a legitimate concern or whether or not it's a lie from the enemy, whether or not it's your pride. Satan, he fell from, did, did you even know? Let me, let me share this. this is something I want to close with. But Satan is a created being. He was created by God, but not to do evil. He was, you read that Lucifer was his name. He was, he was an angel, one of the most beautiful angels the bright and morning star he was called he led the worship and his pride is how he became the enemy his pride is what led to his downfall he has um i had a note here i grabbed the wrong one in isaiah 14 13 through 14 there are several statements that satan made and it started with i will very prideful I will ascend into heaven. This was when he was Lucifer, when he was the bright morning star, and he was in charge of, of the worship, and, and he was a created, beautiful being. And he's looking at God, and he wanted to be God. And he says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mountain 
oh my goodness, I can't even read my, my uh, I was supposed to, to look this up and read it. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So you go look it up, Isaiah 14, 13 through 14, and I'm gonna start working on my head, my handwriting. But the thing is, is he was setting himself up. It was pride. And the pride is why he got thrown down to this earth. And um, it, his pride is why he is going to be tortured and he is going to be chained up and he is defeated. Jesus Christ came to defeat the enemy, to destroy the works of the devil. You see, what happened is Jesus came to set us free from everything that the enemy wants to hold us hostage to. And I'm gonna take time next time. I, I don't have enough time to do it justice tonight. But I'm gonna talk about you know, Satan's role in this world. A lot of times we blame God for things in our life. And sometimes we blame the enemy. And I wanna talk about that next time, that a lot of times we blame God for the bad things when the reality is the enemy is bringing the bad things and sometimes it's our own choices that's bringing the bad things. But I also wanna talk about how the enemy was given any power in this world because the Bible talks about the power that the enemy has. I wanna talk about what happened in the garden, how Adam and Eve had, you know, I can give you a, a short version, but Adam and Eve were placed in the garden and they had the keys to this world, man. They had relationship, perfect relationship with God the Father. They walked and talked with God. They had authority. They had um, jobs to, to cultivate the land and all of this. And then they bought into the lie. And when they bought into the lie, they turned over all that they had, the, the power that they had, the authority over to the enemy. And then he started wrecking havoc. Sin came into this world. Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. And when he died on the cross, he took the keys back from Satan. He took back the authority and then he gave it to us. And there are so many verses, and I will look those up because I was not prepared to do that tonight, but he gives that authority to us, and he tells us to walk in it. And that's how we're going to defeat the enemy. That's how we're going to have victory, is if we start walking in the authority that we have as children of the king. He has given us that authority, but not all of us are walking in it, and I didn't for years because we are not aware of, that our battle is not against flesh and blood. We are not aware of how to fight the battle. We are not aware that the thinkings and the reactions and the emotions that we have, emotions like anxiety and fear, hate and bitterness and pride and unforgiveness, a sense of hopelessness, fear of letting go, fear of trusting God, busyness, being, being um, afraid to tell the truth. He binds us up in all of that, even as Christians. But God has given us the ability through his son Jesus to be free from the control of sin. We talked about we are sons of God and who the spirit of the Lord has set free, we are free indeed. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We are free, but we gotta start walking in the freedom. And so we're gonna talk next time about how, now that we can recognize who the enemy is, we can recognize that he's a liar, deceiver. We are aware of our thinking. You know, we can't keep the lies from coming. And Joyce Meyer always says this, can't keep the lies. They're like birds flying over your head. Can't keep them from flying over, but you can keep them from setting up a nest in your hair. You can keep them from setting up and taking, um, you, you sometimes can't help but get offended, but you can, you can keep yourself from letting that bitter, offensive spirit take root in your heart. You can be aware, so you know what, I, I'm resenting this person right now, and you can stop and you can, instead of falling prey to the enemy's trap, you can stop and say, God, I forgive them. I'm sorry that I'm offended by this, and talk to God about it, and then, that thing, that trick of the enemy is not gonna hold you hostage. So we already learned a little bit how to fight it tonight. We're gonna to, we're gonna talk more next time about fighting the enemy and staying free. And we're gonna talk about how we open up doors and our thinking to let him in. And we're gonna learn how to keep those doors shut so we can walk in a victorious life every single day. Whether you're in prison, you can still have a victorious life. You can be used by God to fulfill the plans and the purposes that he has for you right where you are, 
right now. Don't let the enemy convince you otherwise. Don't let the enemy tell you that you are done, that you've gone too far, that he cannot use you. That is a lie from the enemy, and he is deceiving you. So I want you right now to, to just, when you click this off, get a piece of paper. Go sit with the Lord and say, Lord, show me the lies that I've, I've bought into. Show me the tricks of the enemy. Show me the manipulation that he's used. And help me, God, to see the truth. When, when I am facing those anxious moments, I will sit down and I will write down in one column. I will say, this is what I'm feeling. These are the lies that, that I'm hearing right now, that, that I'm going to fail, that I'm not going to be able to um, fulfill God's purposes for my life, that I'm not going to be able to go to press and print this time because we don't have enough money. But here's what God says. And we can exchange the lie for the truth and we can experience victory. God will show you, as it says in, in Psalms 139, at the very end, I think it's 23 through 24, David said, search me, O God, and show me. Show me if there's any offensive way in me so that I can walk in the way of everlasting. And that is my prayer for you and I tonight is for us to, I'm putting stuff down, sorry. It's for us to sit with the Lord and ask him to reveal to us anything that's in us that is not truth, anything that's in us that is from the enemy so that we can walk in truth and life and hope so that we can be free from the bondage you know, the, Jesus has resurrected us from that dead way of life. Kind of like he brought Lazarus out of the tomb, but some of us are so bound up by Satan's lies. We've got the grave clothes on and God is saying, take them off. Take off the lies. Take off the wrong thinking. Take off the deception and the manipulation. Don't walk in it. Don't buy into it anymore. Don't let Satan steal one more day of your joy. He has no power over you. And he has no power over me because we are children of the king. And he died to give us life and to give it more abundantly. I want to close with a prayer. And I want to ask you that if you need prayer about certain things, if you're an inmate and you want prayer, there's going to be some slides that come up. There's a Stark, Florida address. I want you to write to that address. And our correspondence team, they will take your need to the throne of God. Do you hear my doggies? <laughs> they will take your knee to the throne of God. If you need prayer and you are in free society, I want you to call the number that is on that screen. And uh, Pat Avery, our partner care director, we will pray for you. Shoot us an email. Go to victoriouslivingmagazine.com and shoot us an email. We want to stand with you. And right now I want to pray with you that you will know truth and the truth will set you free. We shall know the truth. We know the word of God. We know truth. And we start walking in the truth. We will be set free. So Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, our Messiah, Lord, our Savior, the way, the truth, and the life, I ask you, God, to just shine light into our hearts, into our minds. Help us to know the truth. Help us to walk in the truth so that we are free. Help us, Lord, to draw close to your spirit and to not settle for the lies of the enemy. Father, help us to see how good you are and to want to be over here following after your path, your good path, and not go the way of the enemy. Help us to not listen to the father of lies. Help us to not heed his voice. Father, help us, like it says in John 10, that we will hear the voice of God and follow it. You are the good shepherd. Help us to recognize your voice and help us to recognize the voice of the enemy and not fall prey to it. Help us to be aware of how we feel and how we are reacting and to start to get a little deeper, Lord, and understand why. Why are we acting that way? Why are we, we reacting the way that we are? Why are we taking things in our own hands? Help us to go down some layers and understand the real why behind our what so that we can set free, be set free by you. I pray that the spirit of light, the word of life will speak to our hearts and show us the way. In your precious name I pray, amen. I want to thank you for joining me. Please pass these more Mondays on to your friend. 
Share those with your loved ones at home. Tell them about them. They can find them on our YouTube channel, Christy Everton Johnson YouTube channel. God bless you. Have a great day.